Canada's Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie is on a rare and surprise trip to China. Today she met with her Chinese counterpart in Beijing. It's the first time in seven years Canada's top diplomat has traveled there for face-to-face -face talks. A senior government source told CBC News the meeting was constructive and productive. China issued its own statement acknowledging tense relations but said this is not what China wants. The relationship turned south in 2018 when China detained two Canadians, Michael Koverig and Michael Spavor. It was further strained by allegations of Chinese interference in Canada's last two elections. Guy Saint-Jacques is Canada's ambassador to, former ambassador to China from 2012 to 2016. He's now a senior fellow at the China Institute at the University of Alberta. Welcome back to the show, sir. Well, thank you for the invitation. The last foreign Canadian minister to visit China was Christia Freeland in 2017. Now Melanie Jolie is in Beijing. What's your read on this visit? How significant is it for bilateral relations? Well, I would say uh, it's very important. It, it, uh, it sends a message that uh, uh, we are not really back to normal in terms of the relationship, but at least there is a dialogue and there is a commitment to uh, continue this uh, dialogue. And, uh, you know, in the, if you look at the last seven years, well, the only minister who visited uh, was uh, Minister Gilbo of Environment, who went uh, in August of last year. So there were a number of issues that uh, uh, Minister Jolie wanted to discuss. And I think our trip is a, a good example of what she calls uh, pragmatic uh, diplomacy. And, uh, you know, when you are dealing in the uh, uh, in the diplomatic field, uh, you have to sometimes to meet with people that uh, you don't necessarily like or that you don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but uh, looking at the communique that uh, came out from the office of Mrs. Jolie, I think she was able to touch upon a very important point, both from a bilateral point of view, and but also from a geopolitical point of view. A Canadian government source with direct knowledge of the meeting called it constructive and productive. How do you interpret that in particular? I mean, that seems fairly positive. Yes, and in fact, uh, uh, you know, the the communique said that uh, the, the two sides noted that uh, uh, there were recent positive developments in the relationship. Uh, for instance, there have been discussion on uh, consular uh, issues. In the past, this uh, proved to be uh, very useful to try to address uh, uh, consular problems, but also there had been a number of uh, senior visits, including the one by Deputy Minister Morrison, who went in April uh, in preparation for the visit of uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Jolie. But also, when you look at uh, uh, what has been reported, uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Jolie was able to uh, raise the issue of interference uh, in Canadian election by uh, the, the Chinese government. Uh, she, the, the community says that Canada will continue to defend our democracy. Uh, but what I find also positive is that the two sides have agreed to continue to discuss issues where there could be progress that could be made in terms of trade. And there, I think, it's on the Chinese side, they are concerned about... Uh, the possible imposition of tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, but also there was uh, a reference to the fact that uh, the, the two sides would look at ways to further improve people-to-people uh, -people exchanges in terms of tourism and uh, students. And in, in terms of tourism, uh, China used to be the, the second largest of overseas uh, visitors mm -hmm. to Canada. Uh, I see that maybe this is a sign where uh, we could see a resumption of uh, uh, larger flows of Chinese tourists to Canada, maybe in the uh, in the near future. I want to get to trade in a second, but let's just focus in on what you mentioned with foreign interference. Of course, as I read in the introduction, this trip is coming not that long after CSIS, our spy agency, found that China was meddling in the 2019 and 2021 federal elections. Uh, and Trudeau himself, you know, calling China a significant threat. Do you think it's appropriate for Melanie Jolie to be meeting with folks like this, bad actors that even our own agencies are suggesting are nefarious characters? Well, I think it is. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, <clears throat> as I said, you know, uh, diplomacy is, uh, uh, doesn't mean that you meet only with the people you agree with. In the case of China, when you look at the relationship and the influence it has on Russia, uh, you know, you have to discuss with them uh, their attitude to, with regard to the, the war in Ukraine, try to convince them to change their, their views. 
you, you think also about North Korea, which is also a very troublesome state. Uh, and, and so taking into account the importance of China, I think it, it was important for Minister Joly to, to meet, to, to raise those difficult issues, to uh, talk about Canadian expectations to, uh, and to tell China what it could do to help uh, uh, foster a peaceful environment internationally. Uh, and the fact that the, uh, the Chinese side agreed to meet, to meet with Minister Joly, despite the fact that they are very angry with the uh, ongoing uh, inquiry on uh, foreign interference in our electoral process, plus the, co the ongoing consultations on possible tariffs that could be imposed on uh, electric vehicle from China. I think this shows that China also recognized that they have to make uh, some concession on their side to try to rebuild the trust. Uh, the Chinese economy is not doing well. Uh, the uh, uh, housing sector uh, is, is still in, uh, uh, in a poor shape. Uh, the price of housing went down 4.5 percent in uh, in June. Mm -hmm. uh, the local debt is uh, quite high. The foreign investment is going down. So they, they have to find a way to try to uh, restore confidence. Yeah, I mean, Canada is kind of in a tricky situation when it comes to electric vehicles and when it comes to economic matters, because obviously the United States moving ahead with tariffs on electric vehicles to try and keep cheap Chinese EVs out of the U.S. market. Canada likely pressured to do something similar. Do you think that Melanie Jolie would have raised that particular issue? And what sort of response would she have gotten from the Chinese? Would, would she be expecting them to maybe threaten punitive measures in response? Well, uh, I can. Uh, I would expect that if she didn't raise it, uh, Minister Wang Yi raised it for sure, because they have to be concerned about this. Uh, I know that some Chinese producers were al already looking at the possibility of exporting electric vehicles to, to Canada. And I must say those vehicles are of good quality. Uh, they are, uh, I would say, about half the price of the vehicles that uh, uh, we, we can buy in Canada in a way. Uh, you know, uh, if China were uh, playing by uh, international trade rules, I think that it would be easier to have a relationship. But uh, clearly, this is a case where Canada has to be very careful uh, about the reaction in Washington, uh, especially if uh, it were uh, uh, Mr. Trump, who, would, who is elected in uh, November because he has uh, promised to have a very tough attitude mm -hmm. on China. Yeah. Uh, and uh, will be lo he will be looking very closely at how we handle uh, uh, this file. And when you you you, you think about the, the more than fifty billion dollars that have been invested by the uh, the federal and provincial governments, especially Ontario and Quebec, with regard to the, uh, the to batteries and electric vehicles, I think we have to to protect uh, yeah. uh, our industry. Uh, and as mentioned in the communique after the visit, the, I think the Chinese recognize that uh, we have to have closer discussions with, with, uh, on, uh, with regard to trade issues uh, yeah. to try to uh, rebuild uh, confidence. Yeah, it could be a whole other ball game if we're looking at a President Trump in Washington. That could certainly change the dynamic. Thank you so much, former Ambassador Guy Saint-Jacques. Appreciate you coming on, sir.